In this video, we'll work out the graphs of some log functions and also talk about their domains. For this first example, let's graph a log function by hand by plotting some points. The function we're working with is y equals log base 2 of x. I'll make a chart of x and y values. Since we're working this out by hand, I want to pick x values for which it's easy to compute log base 2 of x. So I'll start out with the x value of 1 because log base 2 of 1 is 0. Log base anything of 1 is 0. 2 is another x value that's easy to compute. Log base 2 of 2, that's asking what power do I raise 2 to to get 2? Well, and the answer is 1. Po other powers of 2 are easy to work with. So for example, log base 2 of 4 that's saying, what power do I raise 2 to to get 4? So the answer is 2. Similarly, log base 2 of 8 is 3, and log base 2 of 16 is 4. Let me also work with some fractional values for x. If x is 1 half, then log base 2 of 1 half, that's saying, what power do I raise 2 to to get 1 half? Well, that needs a power of negative 1. It's also easy to compute by hand the log base 2 of 1 fourth and 1 eighth. Log base 2 of 1 fourth is negative 2 since 2 to the negative 2 is 1 fourth. And similarly, log base 2 of 1 eighth is negative 3. I'll put some tick marks on my x and y axes. Please pause the video and take a moment to plot these points. Let's see, I have the point. 1, 0, that's here, 2, 1, that's here, 4, 2, that is here, and then 8, 3, which is here. And the fractional x values, 1 half goes with negative 1, and 1 fourth with negative 2, 1 eighth with negative 3. And if I connect the dots, I get a graph that looks something like this. If I had smaller and smaller fractions, I would keep getting more and more negative answers when I took log base 2 of them. So my graph is getting more and more negative. My y values are getting more and more negative as x is getting close to 0. Now, I didn't draw any parts of the graph over here with negative x values, and I didn't put any negative x values in my chart. That omission is, is no accident, because if you try to take the log base 2 or base anything of a negative number, like say negative 4 or something, there's no answer. This doesn't exist because there's no power that you can raise 2 to to get a negative number. So there are no points on the graph for negative x values. And similarly, there are no points on the graph where x is 0 because you can't take log base 2 of 0. There's no power you can raise 2 to to get 0. I want to observe some key features of this graph. First of all, the domain is x values greater than 0. In interval notation, I can write that as a round bracket, because I don't want to include 0, to infinity. The range is going to be the y values well, they go all the way down into the far reach of the negative numbers, and the graph gradually increases, y values getting bigger and bigger, so the range is actually all real numbers, or in interval notation, negative infinity to infinity. Finally, I want to point out that this graph has a vertical asymptote at the y-axis, that is, at the line x equals 0. I'll draw that on my graph with a dotted line. A vertical asymptote is a line that our function's graph gets closer and closer to. So this is the graph of y equals log base 2 of x. But if I wanted to graph, say, y equals log base 10 of x, it would look very similar. It would still have a domain of x values greater than 0, a range of all real numbers, and a vertical asymptote at the y-axis. It would still go through the point 1, 0, but it would go through the point 10, 1 instead because log base 10 of 10 is 1. It would look 
pretty much the same, just a lot flatter over here. But even though it doesn't look like it with the way I've drawn it, it still gradually goes up to and towards infinity. In fact, the graph of y equals log base any a of x for a bigger than 1 looks pretty much the same and has these same three properties. Now that we know what the basic log graph looks like, we can plot at least rough graphs of other log functions without plotting points. Here we have the graph of natural log of x plus 5. And again, I'm just going to draw a rough graph. If I did want to do a more accurate graph, I probably would want to plot some points. But I know that roughly a log graph, if it was just like y equals ln of x, that would look something like this, and it would go through the point 1, 0 with a vertical asymptote along the y-axis. Now if I want to graph ln of x plus 5, that just shifts our graph up by 5 units. It'll still have the same vertical asymptote, since a vertical line shifted up by 5 units is still a vertical line, but instead of going through 1, 0, it'll go through the point 1, 5. So I'll draw a rough sketch here. Let's compare our starting function y equals ln x, and the transformed version, y equals ln x plus 5, in terms of the domain, the range, and the vertical asymptote. Our original function, y equals ln x, had a domain of 0 to infinity. Since adding 5 on the outside affects the y values, and the domain is the x values, this transformation doesn't change the domain. So the domain is still from 0 to infinity. Now the range of our original y equals ln x was from negative infinity to infinity. Shifting up by 5 does affect the y values, and the range is talking about the y values. But since the original range was all real numbers, if you add 5 to all, a set of all real numbers, you still get the set of all real numbers. So in this case, the range doesn't change either. And finally, we already saw that the original vertical asymptote of the y-axis, x equals 0, when we shift that up by 5 units, it's still the vertical line, x equals 0. In this next example, we're starting with a log base 10 function. And since the plus 2 is on the inside, that means we shift that graph left by 2. So I'll draw our basic log function. Here's our basic log function, so I'll think of that as y equals log of x, going through the point 1, 0. Here's its vertical asymptote. Now I need to shift everything left by 2. So my vertical asymptote shifts left, and now it's at the line x equals negative 2 instead of at x equals 0. And my graph, well, let's see, my point 1, 0 gets shifted to, uh, let's see, negative 1, 0 since I'm subtracting 2 from the x's. And here's a rough sketch of the resulting graph. Let's compare the features of the two graphs drawn here. We're talking about domains. The original had a domain of from 0 to infinity. But now I've shifted that left, so I've subtracted 2 from all my x values, and here's my new domain which I can also verify just by looking at the picture. My range was originally from negative infinity to infinity. Well, shifting left only affects the x value, so it doesn't even affect the range. So my range is still negative infinity to infinity. My vertical asymptote was originally at x equals 0. And since I subtract 2 from all my x values, that shifts it to x equals negative 2. In this last problem, I'm not going to worry about drawing this graph. I'll just use algebra to compute its domain. So let's think about what's the issue when you're taking the logs of things. Well, you can't take the log of a negative number or 0. So whatever's inside the argument of the, a log function, whatever's being fed into log, had better be greater than 0. So I'll write that down. We need 2 minus 3x to be greater than 0. Now it's a matter of solving an inequality. 2 has got to be greater than 3x, so 2 thirds is greater than x. In other words, x has to be less than 2 thirds 
So our domain is all the x values from negative infinity to 2 thirds, not including 2 thirds. It's a good idea to memorize the basic shape of the graph of a log function. It looks something like this, goes through the point 1, 0, and has a vertical asymptote on the y-axis. Also, if you remember that you can't take the log of a negative number or 0, then that helps you quickly compute domains for log functions. Whatever is inside the log function, you set that greater than 0 and solve.